welcome you all here on behalf of the Foundation Board. But before I do that, I just want to say it makes my heart feel so good to be here. My husband's mother, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents grew up in Hope County. And when I started becoming a member of this family almost 50 years ago, um, we loved coming to Rayford, coming to Hope County, and uh, even though this is my first time on this wonderful campus, this is like coming home. It does my heart so good. I have such an affinity for the people of Hope County. And um, thank you for letting me be part of that. Um, the foundation, as Dr. Dempsey said, helps bring the students to our campus, uh, not only to pay for tuition, but if they have other needs that they can't afford, the foundation will help them. Um, and our goal really is to make sure that they get that education that they need because education transforms lives more than any gift that we can give our children. And when the foundation raises money, they don't raise money for money's sake. They raise it because they see a need and they've got to take care of that need. And we really feel strongly about that. So thank you uh, from the foundation board. We welcome you all. And it's just a pleasure, pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. You know, uh, Kathy just mentioned the campus, and it is a beautiful campus. It's going to get beautifuler and beautifuler uh, because uh, I, I know that uh, Deb Dallas is here. Or, oh, there she is. Uh, and I know that uh, Chairman Sutherland is here. And uh, between the three of us, if we can't figure a way to get this science and math high school built on this campus, I'll be surprised. That's going to be the next area of emphasis in addition to which, Brenda Jackson, who is around and somewhere, uh, everybody, everybody kind of looks the same, you know, when you're looking at a crowd like this. Brenda is our chief operating officer, and she told me yesterday that for the first time in the history of the college, we're going to be able to have transportation for the people here in Hope County. We're going to have a bus service to bring people to this campus, and a bus service to bring people from this campus up to the Moore County campus, and that is. That is, we're going to do some of that with our COVID-19 money. I was, I was just saying to Chairman Sutherland, it's the old saying, it's an ill wind that blows no one good. Well, you know, that means that no matter how bad it is, somebody's getting help. And and this COVID-19 uh, thing and the money that it's going to come to uh, uh, Sand Hills is going to enable us to do that. And hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, work on this uh, on this building and, and, and uh create a math and science opportunity for the young people of Hope County. I just saw in the paper that Apple is coming to Raleigh with a thousand jobs. Now, I'm not sure I want a thousand jobs anywhere, unless it's Raleigh, because uh, traffic is bad enough in most places. But uh, they're only coming there because they know that there are kids there who are trained in math and science. And that's what this new uh, high school is going to do just like the Sand Hope High School has done for so many, many, many years. Is Colleen here? She's working today. She's probably, the kids don't get out. When do kids get out? May 13th. Okay, so she's getting ready for graduation. Well, you know how successful that program has been and how much it's meant to us at Sand Hills and to the people of this community. So much so that we designated an associate vice president to oversee all the matters here in, in, uh, in Hope County, on the Hope County campus. And the person we chose to do that was a natural, of course, uh, Dr. Twana McKnight, uh, our Hope County campus director, associate vice president for Hope Activities. Uh, and uh, what else is in your title, Twana? <laughs> you know, she's a remarkable woman. She started life with two strikes against her. She's from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> and she's a dookie. <laughs> hey, Brooklyn. But you know, the count was 0 and 2. 
and she saw a fastball right there at the letters and she hit it out of the park That's and right. she's just done a great job here in Oak County. We're very proud of her and what she's done and she's organized a lot of this stuff. Fauna, why don't you come up and uh, tell us a little bit about the beautiful statue uh, and, and the committee that chose it. other words and then we'll talk a little bit more about the statue and the community um, the committee who um, who put assisted me and put in some thought into um, the statue okay um, again my name is Dr. Twana McKnight and first I just want to thank you all this morning for joining us as we celebrate the achievements of Dr. Mary Kemp Thomas. I want us to reflect the statue. I want us to reflect a second. Just imagine the delight of completing a high school equivalency diploma. The excitement of achieving an associate's degree. The elation of obtaining bachelor and graduate level degree. And ultimately, the pride of the attainment of a doctoral degree. I think we all agree that these are some amazing achievements, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I believe you would also agree that these achievements are more amazing if all of them were done by one person in one life. Do you agree? Yes. Oh, yeah. So today, we honor the gathering together to recognize Dr. Mary Kemp Thomas, who has remarkably accomplished all of the aforementioned achievements in one lifetime and forge a path that very few have walked. Dr. Mary Kim Thomas is recognized as the first Sand Hills Community College graduate. She was exceptionally accomplished and demonstrated an extraordinary commitment to improving the lives of others. She is regarded as an inspiration to countless Polk County citizens because of her outstanding contributions to the community as an educator, a community leader, as well as as a pastor. Dr. Thomas served others with a glad heart and with great compassion. She embodied what is possible, and she inspired many to see yesterday as a stepping stone, today as a new beginning, and tomorrow a limitless possibility. This sculpture that is before you is a testament to the spirit and selfless service Dr. Mary Kemp Thomas dedicated to the individuals whose lives she touched. It is our hope today that all who gather near the sculpture exemplify the same ability to believe and inspire others. I want you all to remember before you leave here today that your life too is bigger than just you. The following excerpt from a poem by Howard Rayner, who is a Native American poet, provides inspiration for the sculpture that we will unveil later in the program. Grab hold and take this hand that reaches out to you. If I can lift you today, you will look back and grab the hands of a thousand more. Thank you. And as Dr. Dempsey mentioned, I also wanted to mention to you all, um, he, he kind of talked about um, the mastermind behind the sculpture. Um, I shared with Dr. Dempsey, I think, or maybe with Brenda, that this has been one of the most challenging things that I have been tasked with since I came to Sand Hill. Um, Dr. Thomas is such a phenomenal person here in Hope County. I've never had the privilege and the honor of meeting her, but just through conversations with family and friends, I feel like I've known her all of my life, and she seems like she's part of my family. As we were going through the process to pretty much identify what the sculpture was going to look like or whether we were going to even do a sculpture to begin with, um, there were several conversations that ensued as we looked and we looked 
And I basically went to the family. Um, Lady Six, who was she here yet? Yes. Where was she walking to the car? Okay. Back to the car. Well, Lady Six and I had several conversations about Dr. Thomas, what Dr. Thomas liked, who she was as a person. Um, and the two of us together started having conversations and trying to make decisions. And she felt like it was very important to make sure that we included the family members. So Dr. Thomas's son and daughter, as well as their, um, their spouses, we all got together in the little room right across um, the way there, and we started having conversations about what we wanted it to look like. And I had several different options of several different um, different sculptures. Um, conversations probably ensued for a couple of days, really trying to identify what was going to be the best thing that we could put on this campus to really represent her and the spirit and who she was as a person and what she meant to the whole county. So. What you see today is what we were able to come up with that we feel like really exemplifies who Dr. Thomas is as a person, what she meant to her family members, her friends, as well as what she meant to her community. I believe you guys will all enjoy it. And I just want to say before I go back to my seat that I just want you all to know the wonderful experience it has been for me to work with the family in order to bring this idea to fruition. Because when Lady Six came to Dr. Dempsey, she wanted Dr. Thomas's name on the building. And we went from a building to what you see here today, and I believe that everybody would be happy with what we came up with. So again, this is to honor Dr. Thomas, and I wanna thank the family for all of the support that you have provided to me throughout this process so that we can, we could have ensured that this day was going to be a phenomenal day for such a phenomenal woman. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. I will be very brief. Uh, when I was asked if I would make a few remarks about the community in which she lived, and I told them, okay, I would. Uh, and I consider it a privilege to be able to do so. I live in the same community that uh, Dr. Mary Pack lived in. Uh, and that community is Civil City. Many of you may have heard that name before, and some of and for some of you may not have ever heard that name. But Civil City is a small community located in the northwest section of Oak County. So, how many of you have been in the area of Civil City before? Oh, yeah, okay. You know, in Civil City, we call uh, Dr. Mary Kay Thomas Dr. Mary Kay. We live right there, Dr. Mary Kay. Uh -huh. um, one thing that I want to say about that neighborhood, I moved in that neighborhood in 1973 uh, when I came back to Rayford and I was living in Fort Bragg. I moved to the uh, Silver City community, and one thing I found that community to be, that neighborhood to be, a neighborhood where all of our neighbors knew each other. They were there for each other. They had each other's back. It was a neighborhood where children were taught to respect and obey their elders. It was a faith-based neighborhood that valued Christian principles. It was a neighborhood that you could feel the love. Dr. Mary Bay was a jewel in that community. She may be gone today, but she will never Forgotten. There are so many memories that she left. I will just name a few memories that I have of her, and I believe that some of the others that are here may have some of the same memories. I remember the regular smile that she had when she would greet you. Sit in the shut-in community, and she prayed for it. You don't see that, but Mary, Dr. Mary. 
Mary Kay did that. In another memory that I have of her, I remember that wide brown hair <laughs> and the classy suits she was wearing. Dr. Mary Kay would not leave her house for church or any function where she had been invited without the I said I put so much attention on the hat to suit, I forgot to look at the shoes. But most importantly, I would like to say I remember her as a godly Christian lady that will always be in my heart. So at this time, if you were from the Civil City area, I would like to use to stand and show the family the love that you have. Thank you so much for coming. As much as she loves the Civil City community, Dr. Mary Kay also loved and shared her life, her talents, and skills with the students of Oak County. She began her career in the whole kind of schools in 1963. She served in the following capacities. And I would like for you to just look at the steps that were taken before she reached the goal that she had in life. She was a school home visitor. Many of you today may not know what a school home visitor was. But this was very important to our school community during the early 60s, whenever, uh, before uh, integration. If the student was absent, we had to have somebody to visit that hall to see why that child was not in school. Dr. Mary Kay was one of those women. She was a full-time substitute teacher. She became a teacher assistant an interim teacher, and after receiving her credentials, she became a full-time elementary teacher at West Oak Elementary School. Today, with us, we have one of the principals that was at West Oak Elementary School when Dr. Mary Kay taught there. This is part of Miles. Please wait. by her peers to become West Oak Middle School Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Dr. Mary Kay was a phenomenal woman. She was a master teacher. She was outstanding educator. She strengthened the community through her presence and service. And she retired in 1993 with 30 years of service to the Hope County School Commission. Her legacy, her legacy will forever live on in the lives of those who is her. And on behalf of the Civil City community that are present here today and the Hope County School, I would like to say thank you for allowing us to share in the honor of her memory. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.